Hi, this is Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room classroom here on Wolf Mountain. These 10 videos are a review of all of the 462 questions that make up the general license question pool. The idea behind the videos is a way to prepare for the exam. I'm going to be reading the question and then the correct answer. And when I can, I'll provide a brief explanation as to why that happens to be the correct answer. So here we go. This is part four. G4A01. What is the purpose of the notch filter found on many HF transceivers? That's easy. It's to eliminate carriers. So it's B, to reduce interference from carriers or tones in the receiver passband. So you have a uh, another CW signal in the passband of your receiver. And if you want to eliminate that one guy, you can do that with the notch control. It's extraordinarily effective. G4A02. What is one advantage of selecting the opposite or reverse sideband when receiving CW signals on a typical HF transceiver? And the answer is C. It may be possible to reduce or eliminate interference to other signals. Okay, G4A03. What is normally meant by operating a transceiver in the split mode? And the answer is C. The transceiver is set to different transmit and receive frequencies. The DX station might be on 14.195, listening uh, 14.225, 30 kilohertz higher. So uh, what you do is uh, move uh, your VFO to the frequency he's listening on. You leave your receive receiver on his transmit frequency, and then you initiate the split on the usually on the front of the transceiver. It's usually not a menu setting. G for A04. What reading on the play current meter of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier? indicates correct adjustment of the plate tuning control. I don't like this answer, but I'll go with it. Uh, it's where there's a dip when you're tuning, where there's a dip in the plate current. Um, that dip may or may not occur at um, <clears throat> the um, uh, point where the amplifier is correctly adjusted. The point at which an amplifier is correctly adjusted is where the maximum output occurs. Uh, you're getting everything out of the tank circuit. So G4A05, what is a reason to use ALC automatic level control with an RF power amplifier? The answer is C, to reduce distortion due to exec, uh, excessive drive. Uh, actually, using ALC can cause other problems. So when you use it, you have to make sure it's set up correctly. It's sort of a... Um, voltage that comes back to the transceiver to throttle it back, back to the transceiver from the uh, from the amplifier to throttle the output of that transceiver. So it's um, a, a voltage sent to the transceiver from the linear saying, hey, uh, too much drive, turn it down. G4A06, what type of device is often used to match transmitter output impedance to an impedance not equal to 50 ohms? Well, first of all, uh, many transmitters have, uh, especially the older ones, could match all kinds of impedances. Uh, the answer here is C, an antenna coupler or an antenna tuner is the device you, you would use to match impedances. And that's, that's what it does. It doesn't really tune the antenna. All right. The next one, G4A07. What condition can lead to permanent damage to a solid state RF power amplifier? And the answer is D, excessive drive. And, and that, um, G4A08, what is the correct adjustment for the load or coupling control of a vacuum tube power amplifier? And that's when the maximum power output occurs without exceeding the maximum allowable plate current. Um, in other words, you get the most out of the tank circuit without exceeding the, uh, the rating of the tube or tubes. Um, G4A09. What is the time delay 
sometimes Y is a time delay, sometimes included in a transmitter keying circuit. Um, and the answer is to allow time for the transmit receive changeover operations to complete properly before RF output is allowed. Um, what that's saying is some transceivers have a delay to uh, before the signal actually leaves the box. And that delay is to allow another box, like a linear amplifier, to complete the sometimes mechanical relay that has to change position uh, to connect the antenna. So it's slower to change from transmit to re from receive to transmit uh, than the transceiver. So the transceiver has to compensate by slowing the time down that it puts out a signal. G4A10. What is the purpose of an electronic keyer? And that's uh, pretty easy. That's the automatic generation <laughs> of dots and dashes for CW operation. Um, dots and dashes, it's dits and daws. But, okay. Um, G4A11. Which of the following is, which of the following is a use for the IF shift control on a receiver, a very handy device. And that's to avoid interference from stations that are very close in frequency. You can shift the IF and move the receiver just slightly away from somebody who might be above or below your receive frequency. G4A12. Which of the following is a common use for the dual VFO feature on a transceiver? Um, I have that, and that is to be able to listen or monitor on two different frequencies, uh, in some cases at the same time. Um, that can occur when uh, you're in split operation with the DX station. Uh, G4A13, what is one reason to use the attenuator function that is present on many HF transceivers? Uh, the attenuator reduces the the, uh, the incoming signals uh, to stop sometimes overload or distortion. So the answer is uh, to reduce signal overload due to strong incoming signals, and that's A. G4, A14. What is likely to happen if a transceiver's ALC system is not properly, um, is not set properly when transmitting audio frequency shift keying signals with the radio using the single sideband mode. Um, basically what that says is it, what's, what happens if the mic gain is too high? And the answer is improper action of the ALC distorts the signal and causes spurious emissions. So uh, the ALC starts to activate and uh, throttle back the, uh, the mic gain and that can cause some distortion. It's always better to set the ALC level um, at about one-third to one-half scale. G4A15. Which of the following can be a symptom of transmitted RF being picked up by an audio cable carrying AFSK data signals between a computer and a transceiver? Um, and the answer is uh, all of them. The Vox circuit does not unkey, it stays keyed because there's RF on that cable. The transmitted signal is distorted. Um, frequent connection timeouts, that one I don't know about, <clears throat> but at least two of these are true, so it's all of the above. Um, and that's what happens when RF gets into uh, some of the cables that are used between a computer and a transceiver. Oftentimes they're not well insulated. G4B01, what item of test equipment contains horizontal and vertical channel amplifiers? Um, that would be an oscilloscope. Think of the XY axes. G4B02, which of the following is an, ad an advantage of an oscilloscope versus a digital voltmeter? Um, because you can look at the waveform, uh, and that's D. I uh, can't see much on a voltmeter. G4B03, which of the following is the best instrument to use when checking the keying waveform of a CW 
transmitter. And again, that's an oscilloscope because you can see what it looks like. G4B04, what signal source is connected to the vertical input of an, oscillos an oscilloscope when checking the RF envelope pattern of a transmitted signal? And that is um, the attenuated RF output of the transmitter is put into the vertical um, input. Um, so that you can see the the rise and fall of the transmitted signal, if you will. G4B05, why is high input impedance desirable for a voltmeter? Um, if it were low impedance, uh, let's say just a few ohms, and you put it across a, um, a source that you were measuring, yeah, it could act like a short. So you have a high resistance or high impedance so that it de decreases the loading on the circuits being measured. G4B06, what is an advantage of a digital voltmeter as compared to an analog voltmeter? Um, usually they're, they're more accurate and that's the, because uh, you don't have to interpolate the, the value from the meter scale, it's staring at you. G4B07, what signals are used to conduct a two-tone test? Well, two signals. So two non-harmonically non related audio signals. In other words, you don't use a 500 and a 1000 um, uh, hertz signal. They're not related. Great way to tune up an amplifier. G4B08, which of the following instruments may be used to monitor relative RF output when making antenna and transmitter adjustments? And that would be a field strength meter. It's a, a meter with a little antenna on it and it uh, uses a diode to rectify the RF indicate some kind of voltage reading. G4B09, which of the following can be determined with a field strength meter? Um, you use a field strength meter to measure the field strength. So, <laughs> so it's the radiation pattern of an antenna as you walk around with this thing. G4B10, which of the following can be determined with a directional watt meter? Um, well, it's a watt meter, so watts. And in many of them, uh, it also has an SWR scale, so the standing wave ratio. G4B11, which of the following must be connected to an antenna analyzer when it is being used for SWR uh, measurements and the answer is the um, antenna and the feed line. So which of the following must be connected to an antenna analyzer when it's being used for SWR measurements the antenna and feed line that's a bit misleading um, could be just the antenna. Uh, G4B12 what problem can occur when making measurements on an antenna system with an antenna analyzer. Um, that can happen because sometimes the analyzer sees other signals in the area like an AM broadcast station. So the answer is B. Strong signals from nearby transmitters can affect the accuracy of an antenna analyzer. G4B13. What is it used for an antenna analyzer other than measuring SWR of an antenna system? Well, there's lots. Um, in this case, it's determining the impedance uh, of an unmarked cable. Um, you can't measure front to back, you can't measure turns ratio, and you can't measure the gain of an antenna. But you can sure measure a coax cable and uh, losses and other things. G4B14. What is an instance in which the use of an instrument with an analog readout may be preferred over an instrument with a digital readout. Um, that's when adjusting something like uh, tuning up an amplifier, and that's the that's the answer when adjusting tuned circuits. G4B15. What type of transmitter perf performance does a two-tone test analyze? Um, it's the two tones produce a pattern, and with that pattern, you can see that the two tones look the same. 
if they look the same or if it has the same shape or um, in there are other patterns you can put up. It determines the, the linearity, whether or not the amplifier is amplifying without distorting the signal. G4C01, which of the following might be used in reducing RF interference to an audio frequency device? Um, and that is a little bypass capacitor like a disc ceramic. It takes the RF to ground and the um, that's often the solution for um, RF interference on a, on a wire or a cable or a circuit board. G4C02, which of the following could be a cause of interference covering a wide range of frequencies? Um, the um, power line arcing is a good example, and it says arcing at a poor electrical connection, and that's true because it covers such a broad spectrum. It can cover from um, basically from HF up through um, uh, gigahertz. What sound is heard from an audio device or telephone if there is interference from a nearby single sideband phone transmitter? Boy, it sounds like an old question. And um, the answer is distorted speech. Without there being a, a beat frequency oscillator, it's going to sound kind of like Donald Duck or distorted speech. G4C04, what is the effect on an audio device or telephone system if there is interference from a nearby code or CW transmitter? Um, and it's a the on and off humming, it says, but the on and off signal and uh, sometimes a clicking. But it, it does sound like CW. G4C05, what might be the problem if you receive an RF burn when touching your equipment while transmitting on an HF band, assuming the equipment is connected to a ground rod? Well, that's a whole bunch of um, issues. And actually, I do like the answer on this one. It says the ground wire or ground conductor has a high impedance on that frequency. In other words, it may be too long, uh, maybe the wrong size, maybe the wrong shape. Uh, that's a whole nother discussion, but um, those are obvious reasons when uh, you can get an RF burn. G4C06, what effect can be caused by a resonant ground connection? Um, and the answer is C, high RF voltage on the cabinets or enclosures, um, basically the cabinets of the station equipment. G4C07, what is one good way to avoid unwanted effects of stray RF in an amateur station? Um, basically grounding it. So it says connect all equipment grounds together. G4C08, which of the following would reduce RF interference caused by common mode on an audio cable? Common mode is the current that flows on the outside of the shield. So to stop that, you put a ferrite bead on the outside of the shield. So it's A, placing a ferrite choke around the cable, and that stops common mode currents. G4C09, how can a ground loop be avoided? <clears throat> uh, the answer is <clears throat> G4C09. How can a ground loop be avoided? The answer is connect all the grounds to a single point. And uh, that's D. G4C10. What could be a symptom of a ground loop where... Uh, what could be a symptom of a ground loop somewhere in your station? The answer is um, you get reports of a hum on your transmitted signal. Sometimes you can hear that with your headphones if you turn on the monitor. G4C11. Which of the following is a function of a digital signal processor or DSP? Um, and one thing is to remove noise. So it... Uh, basically uh, 
allows everything uh, everything to go through but um, but noise it can digitally remove noise from a signal source g4c12 which of the following is an advantage of a receiver dsb if filter as compared to an analog filter and the answer is a a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes just about anything can be done with some programming um, with a digital filter G4C13, which of the following? <clears throat> G4C13, which of the following can perform automatic notching of interfering carriers? And that's B, a digital signal processor. G4D01, what is the purpose of a speech processor as used in a modern transceiver? Um, when properly adjusted, it increases the intelligibility uh, of the signal at the other end. So it's A. Um, uh, the other answer is here. Um, for example, increased transmitter base response for more natural sounding SSB. If you increase the base, generally it's harder for someone to understand what you're saying. Uh, it doesn't prevent distorted voice signals. And it says decrease high frequency voice output over out of the uh, out out of the band. I, I'm not sure what D says. G4D02. Which of the following describes how a speech processor affects a transmitted single sideband phone signal? And basically, a speech processor brings up all the averages. So uh, the answer is B. G4D03, which of the following can be the result of an incorrectly adjusted speech processor? And the answer is going to be all uh, distorted speech, splatter, excessive uh, background pickup, uh, room echo, uh, distortion. Um, I can't think of what else, but uh, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. So the the speech processor has to be properly adjusted, and that's by keeping the ALC at one-third to one-half scale. G4D04, what does an S-meter measure? And an S-meter is a strength meter, so it's C, received signal strength. G4D05, what does a signal that reads 20 dB over S9 compare to one that reads S9 on a receiver, assuming a properly calibrated S meter. Well, this one's really easy actually. 20 dB. So the 2 uh, is 2 uh, two zero. So it would be 1 and followed by 2 zeros or 100 times. So a signal strength that reads 20 dB over S9 compared to one that's S9 is a hundred times more powerful. G4D06, where is an S meter found? Uh, it's on a receiver. It's a strength meter, so it's A. G4D07, how much must the power output of a transmitter be raised to change the S meter reading on a distant receiver from S8 to S9. Well, that's a one S unit difference, and one S unit is roughly equal on most receivers to 6 dB. Previously, we learned that um, doubling the power increases um, a, an S meter reading by 3 dB. So, to get to 6 dB, we need to double the power twice. So, it's 2 times two or four times. Correct answer is C, four times. G4D08, what is the frequency range? What frequency range is occupied by a three kilohertz lower sideband signal when the displayed carrier frequency is set to 7.178? Well, it's lower sideband and it's three kilohertz. So Take away three from there, and you've got 7175. So the answer is C, 7.175 to 7.178.
G4 D09, what frequency range is occupied by a 3 kHz upper sideband signal with a display carrier frequency of 14.347? Well, okay, it goes up, so we add 3, so it's 14.350. The answer is B, 14.347. By the way, <laughs> um, the uh, part of the answer is right here. It says the, the start is uh, 14.347. Uh, going through these, uh, again, it narrows it down to two. Uh, this one's a 300 change. This one's a 3 kilohertz change. So obviously it's it's B. G4D10. How close to lower edge of the 40 meter general class phone segment should your displayed carrier frequency be when using 3 kilohertz wide lower side band? Um, well, the answer is right there. Uh, you don't want to be, uh, you want to be at least three kilohertz away from the edge. So the answer is A, at least three kilohertz above the edge of the segment. Uh, that's just a good rule of thumb. Um, uh, cause the FCC will cite you if they hear you, uh, uh part of your sideband is, uh, below the edge or out of the band segment that you're licensed for. G4D11, how close to the upper edge of the 20 meter general class band should your displayed carrier frequency be when using a 3 kilohertz wide upper sideband? Well, it's basically the same answer. Uh, at least 3 kilohertz below the edge. So it's B. Um, and the difference between A and B is B is below the edge and we're talking about the upper end of that uh, frequency range. G4E01, what is the purpose of a capacitance hat on a mobile antenna? Well, I used to manufacture those, so um, it it basically makes the antenna appear to be longer. So think of it this way. You've got a vertical rod that's the mobile antenna, and you add rods to it going horizontally. Well, it just adds to the length. So C, to electrically lengthen a physically short antenna. G4E02. What is the purpose of a Corona ball? Well, right there is the answer. What is the purpose of a Corona ball on an HF mobile antenna? Um, a lot of high voltage is developed on the end of a mobile antenna, and to keep it from producing little lightning things off the end, there is a large surface area, and that's the Corona ball to keep Corona from occurring. So it's D to re reduce high voltage discharge from the tip of the antenna. Uh, G4E03. Which of the following direct fuse power connections would be best for a 100 watt HF mobile installation? Which of the following direct fuse connections would be best? Well, the best thing generally is to go right to the battery. So it's A to the battery using heavy gauge wire. You want to have good copper wire and at least capable of handling whatever current is required. Could be 20 amps. G4E04, why is it not best? Why is it best not to draw DC power for a 100 watt HF transceiver from the vehicle's auxiliary power socket, or sometimes called the cigarette lighter socket? Well, um, most of the time it can't handle the current, especially on the new cars. So it says uh, B, the socket's wiring may be inadequate for the current drawn by the transceiver. Uh, in today's vehicles, many of those sockets are only good for a couple of amps, and your transceiver maybe could draw 20 amps. G4, E05, which of the following most limits the effective, effectiveness of an HF mobile transceiver operating in the 75 meter band? Um, because the antenna is uh, on a mobile is so short, typically 8 feet or so, uh, it is the antenna system, which includes... Uh, the whole thing, uh, grounding of the mounting bracket and, and, and the whole business. So it's C, the antenna, because it's a very low frequency and a very short antenna. You can imagine what the efficiency is at, at that length. G4E06, what is one disadvantage of using a shortened mobile antenna as opposed to a full-sized antenna? Um, of, the, of the answers that are here, um, a couple of them are just silliness. So A, it causes a distortion. No. Uh, B, circular polarized. No, that's just garbage.
uh, D, harmonic radiation may increase now. Uh, if anything, it might actually be less. Uh, C is the right answer. The bandwidth is very limited as you... Um, as the length of the antenna is short in comparison to what the wavelength is, uh, its bandwidth becomes really narrow. G4E07, which of the following may cause interference to be heard in the receiver of an HF radio installed in a recent model vehicle? Um, basically, it's a bunch of things. So the answer is D. Uh, fuel system, computers, there's all that stuff going on making noise. G4E08, what is the name of the process by which sunlight is changed directly into electricity? So um, you've heard of photovoltaic cells. Well, A is the answer. Photo, photo light to voltage conversion. G4E09, what is the approximate open circuit voltage from a fully illuminated silicon photovoltaic cell? Um, this one, I, I'm not sure. Open circuit uh, voltage, uh, it's telling us the answer is a half a volt. I This one, I don't know. So, open circuit voltage from a fully illuminated photovoltaic. Okay. Um, stumps me because I would think it would vary with the size of the photo cell. G4E10. What is the reason that a series diode is connected between a solar panel and a storage battery? That's pretty obvious. Um, the uh, diode becomes like a one-way, um, like a check valve. So it's it's B, the diode prevents self-discharge of the battery through the panel during times of low or no elimination. In other words, um, current could flow back towards the, um, the solar panel. And to stop that, you put in a diode. And a diode is just a one-way gizmo. That's why it's able to rectify AC. G4 E11, which of the following is a disadvantage of wind? as the primary source of power for an emergency station. Um, well, <laughs> um, the obvious answer is C, when there is no wind. So it's C, a large uh, energy storage system is needed when the wind is not blowing. Who would have thought that, huh?